Hello, my name is Suzanne Palermo Carinini. I live in Switzerland and I'm a member of the coordinating team of this online training program dedicated to Satya Sai Educare. And I am delighted to be your facilitator for today's session. A very warm welcome to all of you on behalf of our entire team. Dear participants, our experience is growing. We are growing together. We are becoming more and more aware of how important and necessary it is to cultivate, to promote and to foster human values in our families, in our communities and in our lives. During the first session of module two, we learned more about the pedagogy of this program. And we learned more about the meaning of integral education. Mrs. Marianne Mayer highlighted the four pillars of education as identified by the Delors Commission to UNESCO. The four pillars that make education complete and fit for our times. You may recall that they are the learning to know, the acquisition of knowledge, learning to do, the acquisition of skills, learning to live together, the development of mutual understanding, harmonious living together and right human relations. And finally, learning to be, a process that implies and involves self-inquiry, self-understanding, self-development, and self-knowledge. Two weeks ago, we became more aware. We realized how an environment and culture of love is the only foundation on which these four pillars can be safely and securely erected. And we know that such an environment can only be the outcome of our practice and sharing of human values. And then, of course, we were all very inspired by the lovely work that Raksha Matani shared with us that she's carrying out with her children in class. And I'm sure that everyone, I certainly was, was very touched by seeing the children's own participation and insights. Similar examples are very, very inspiring and they motivate us and they encourage us to find our own ways to enhance our practice of human values. And Elena Rodriguez is an example of this. I'm sure you remember the very, very original project and activity that she shared with us during our last session. And in my opinion, this really demonstrates how connecting to Satya Sai Educare, we are connecting to a powerhouse of creativity. So there is room for all. Now, today we will take a further step and we will see how teachers, we refer specifically to school teachers, though we know that whoever has a role as educator in the life of the child is a teacher. And we will see how teachers can facilitate and help the emergence of the human values from within the child. We know that it is not a question of teaching from behind a desk, that it is not needed to memorize concepts by heart. The only way we can impact the children, the only way we can inspire them and set them on track is by our own example. So this leads us directly to today's session, which is dedicated to the teacher as an exemplar of human values. As previously, this session will also be divided into two parts. First, we will have the pleasure of listening to Vasiliki Stefanidis, who will share some inspiring thoughts and some of her enriching experience with us related to this topic. We will then have a short moment dedicated to questions and answers. So please be ready with your questions. 
If during the presentation, any question arises, make a note of it. So when you are invited, you can do so. After our session of question and answers, we will have a short five minute break and then come back to uh, share a very uplifting and fun workshop together. So before I introduce our first speaker to you, I would like to remind you to please verify that you have written your names correctly and that your mics and cameras are turned off so we can all have a very smooth Zoom connection today. And now it is great pleasure for me to introduce Siliki. Most of you have met her already, but I would like to mention a few details of her very rich career as a teacher and as a teacher trainer of Satya Sai Educare. So Vasiliki has taught business administration at the American College of Greece, the Deary College, where she is now Professor Emeritus. Since 1989, she has been teaching Satya Sai Education and Human Values classes for children. And since 1992, she has participated in Satya Sai EHB training programs conducted in various countries in Europe by the ESSE Institute in her capacity of teacher trainer. Since its founding in 2009, she is a faculty member and senior trainer of the Satya Sai Institute of Education of South Europe. Over the years, Vasily has also been invited to speak at various conferences and to university students in many parts of the world. And she is co-founder of the Satya Sai Center for Human Values in Athens, an initiative developed jointly with George Bebedelis. So I would now like to invite Vasiliki to please inspire us with her very rich experience. So dear Vasiliki, please take over. Thank you very much, dear Suzanne, for your beautiful introduction. Suzanne is also the vice director of our ISA Institute. Dear participants, our subject today, as Suzanne said already, is the teacher as an example of human values. The teacher is at the heart of Sai education. Teachers reveal the direction and the goal. Students pave the way and journey into the future. Satya Sai says, the school is not the place to just stimulate the ability to teach and learn. It is the place where noble ideas are taught, where awareness is awakened and enlightened, purified and strengthened. The place where the qualities of the heart can germinate. Only then may the young emerge in life, be happy and work for the welfare and progress of the world. The teacher's first duty is to cultivate the virtues in the pupils' hearts. This is much more important than promoting study. Albert Einstein said, it is indispensable for students to acquire an understanding and a vivid sense of values. They must achieve an intense sensitivity for what is beautiful and morally good. Otherwise, with mere specialist knowledge, they will eventually look like a well-trained dog rather than a person who has grown up harmoniously. Satya Sai says, teachers must work in an atmosphere of love, 
and truth, not hate and falsehood. They must move among the children, happy and content, not angry and sullen. Then only can they radiate love. Johann Pestalozzi, a Swiss pedagogue and educator reformer of the 19th century, says, education is love and example. The role of the educator is to teach children, not subjects. Examples are persons with an impressing behavior and character so that they can be imitated. Some of their characteristics are sacrifice, helping others, support of socially disadvantaged people, justice, courage, tolerance, perseverance. Examples can be holy people, historic personalities, teachers, parents, local heroes, best friends, stars or idols. Some examples of the 19th and 20th century would be here we can see Leon Tolstoy and his wife, a 19th century Russian writer. Mother Teresa of Albanian ethnicity, a Roman Catholic nun, winner of the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1979. She lives, she lived until 1997. Mahatma Gandhi, the political and ideological leader of India. He lived until 1948. Martin Luther King, an African-American leader of civil rights. He lived until 1968. Albert Schweitzer, an Alsatian theologian philosopher, a medical missionary, lived until 1965. Abraham Lincoln, a 19th century president of the United States, And Torbjorn Mayer, a Danish professor of the University of Copenhagen, he founded the ESSE Institute in 1987. He lived until 2009. Now we will see some theatrical plays that we had with our teacher during the summer camps of the Center of Human Values in Athens. In the year 2016, we worked on the life of Mahatma Gandhi, who said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Here are some photos of the play with our children playing. And here the last presentation in front of teachers and friends of our children. Then in the year 2017, we had a theatrical play on the life and work of Albert Schweitzer. And we showed the first hospital 
and the way he went to Africa. Then in 2018, we presented the life and teachings of Sri Satya Sai Baba with the message of the camp, help ever, hurt never. In the summer of 2021, we worked on the life and work of Mother Teresa. It was last summer. We see the pictures from the play, Mother Teresa and her assistants working on the people that were very sad, uh, sick at the slums of India, Calcutta. Here all the students and teachers are singing, finally. Now, a research work in Berlin in 2006 tried to answer the question, why we need examples? The results were that we need them for orientation, 30% of the need, inspiration, 28%, emulation or imitation, 18%, courage, 14%. Pupils' expectations towards class teachers. They are to educate, to being active in private and beyond school days, to help with problems, to be an example and authority, to organize cultural events, and to be an advocate of the child. Some of my experiences during the years of teaching at the college or Deary College well, I will present them now to you. I was teaching, among other courses, the course Ethical Action in Business, where I stressed the value of righteousness for the manager of the enterprise. The college students were 18 to 20 years old. I remember once at the beginning of the semester, a student came to me and asked permission to repeat the course because he wanted to listen again and participate in the activities of the course. Another student who had graduated from Deary College came back to ask for a transcript of his grades from the uh, secretary of the president. And she asked him, in all these four years of his studies, which course did he like best? And his answer was, I liked the ethical action in business course because this became a compass in my life. I also invited a, a visitor speaker every semester, Mr. George Bebedelis, to speak about Aristotle and human values to my students. Also in the college, there are several extracurricular activities like photography club, mathematics club, and other hobbies of the students. I proposed and volunteered to form a club which I called a Community Contribution Club and that was for all the students of the college. We would go on Saturdays to uh, orphanage, to the orphanage of our community, where the students would play with the babies and children and help also the children with their studies. At other times, we would go to the uh, old people's pension home and invite them to go with the bus to a seashore, to a cafeteria where we would offer them tea and coffee. The students would sit 
and chat at the tables with them. And they received from what they told me, many good wishes for their future. For this, the college would uh, provide a budget for the activities of our club. Other times we went for tree planting to areas burned by fire. At the end of the year, when prizes were given to the clubs, we received twice the prize for the number one club. Next slide, please. In the words of Satya Sai, teachers are remembered more for what they were than for what they taught. Here is a beautiful story, which is almost true, about a professor at the Johns Hopkins University in the United States of America, who found a report uh, on a research done 25 years earlier. It was about 120 students of the underprivileged suburban areas of New York. The conclusion of this report was that uh, in a few years, 90% of the students would sooner or later end up in jail. The professor gave his students a task to find those former students and collect data about their present condition and make a report. They managed to find most of the 120 students and what a surprise, only four of them were in prison now. This was so significant deviation from the probability of statistics that the professor wanted to find more about the reason for it. He started to inquire who taught them. He made a real effort to find their teacher, an old lady by now. When he met her, he asked her just one question. What was the method? or program that she used when she taught these students. Her answer was straightforward and sincere. I just loved them. The importance of a teacher's character. Satya Sai says, your character is the best tool for the profession you have entered upon. Your learning is, of course, valuable, but one can excuse a little less of it. Character, on the other hand, must be 100% perfect. He also said that EHV, Education in Human Values, is really 3HV. It's really the 3H. That means the harmony between head, heart, and hands. It is essential for teachers to understand that education involves the 3H. The thoughts we have in our hand, head should be approved by our heart, which here is the conscience, and put into action by our hands. This creates a process of inner transformation and purification of the heart that allows the teacher to perform educational activities aiming at high ideals. The teacher should do spiritual practice to ensure control of senses. His thoughts should be to recognize the intrinsic value and divinity of every person. To respect pupils. His or her heart to show warmth, 
availability and kindness towards others and to help to build up self-esteem. His expectations of efficiency, what we know as Pygmalion effect, that is according to our expectations, is the performance of the group to whom, from whom we expect to do things. His words, the teacher is conscious of the power of words and constantly watches his or her language. He speaks softly and gently. He uses words of encouragement and support. He speaks with confidence. His actions. The teacher should send, should send a positive message with his or her face, body language, and tone of voice. He should welcome the pupils with a smile. He should demonstrate nonviolent behavior, show kindness, helpfulness, warm hospitality. He should express availability not making any unkind gestures. And he should listen empathetically. That is, he should be able to put himself in the position of a student and listen carefully and with respect. In the words of Satya Sai, the authentic human values cannot be learned from books or from lectures, or given by teachers, or gifted by elders. They can be acquired only by experience and example. The first essential condition for a teacher is to maintain inner purity. As the water in the tank, so will be the water at the top. If a student has a defect, he alone suffers. But if a teacher has a flaw, many students can be contaminated. Teachers our pupils. Sai says, consider yourself also as a student and take it as your spiritual practice. You will have to proceed patiently, slowly, steadily, but earnestly. Teachers should bring into their pupils' way the common factor of good advice about human conduct contained in all spiritual traditions and ancient scriptures. Practice should always precede precept. You should find and first have personal experience, understanding, and conviction in what you teach. Teachers should conduct themselves just in the same manner as they advise and expect the students to behave, says Satyasai. In the words of Confucius, Tell me and I will forget it. Show me and I will remember. Let me do it and I will keep it in my memory. Rudyard Kipling said, no printed word, no spoken plea can teach young minds what they should be. Not all the books on all the shelves but what the teachers are themselves.
And here we have the letter that Satya Sai Baba wrote to the teachers in 1990. Dear teachers, teaching is the noblest of professions. It is also the holiest spiritual practice for self-realization. For it involves the cultivation of selfless love and the showering and sharing of that love. You mold the rising generation into self-confident, self-reliant, atma-conscious persons. You are the architect of happy homes, prosperous communities, and peaceful nations. Teachers need not only to equip themselves with the knowledge and the skills to inform and instruct, but also the vision and insight to inspire and transform. Children absorb from teachers and elders their habits and manners, behavior and beliefs. Therefore, the teacher has to be a constant example of the ideals he or she has to implant in their hearts. You must excel in humility, simplicity, morality, and integrity, so that education results in excellence. Such a teacher can be a beacon of truth, love, and reverence. The children who grow under his or her wise care will shine as lamps of love in their homes, radiating courage, joy, and hope. Let the beacons never fade. Let the lamps be ever bright. With blessings, Sri Satya Sai. Thank you for your attention. Dear Vasiliki, thank you so much on behalf of all of us for your lovely presentation. I can understand why your students came back to you asking you to repeat also what you had done together because it is so rich and full of good advice that we would like to see it again to really imbibe the teachings and your rich experience. So thank you so much. And of course, there's no doubt that the teacher's example, habits, attitude, beliefs, uh, the, the way they speak to their students is so important. So thank you again so much, dear Vasiliki. Yes. I'd like to now ask uh, Esther Chris to kindly take over as now we will have a, a short moment dedicated to questions and answers. Thank you so much, dear Suzanne, and thank you, Vasiliki, for this inspiring uh, presentation. I was wondering, how can we know if a teacher really has uh, the, the characteristics we need? And uh, here I have a question for you. If you would be asked to interview a young teacher for a job at your school, what would you expect from them? What questions would you put forth? Yes, if I would be asked to interview a young teacher for the job, I would try to understand if he is sincere in his words and intentions, if he has a good character with integrity, if his motivation is pure, if he has enthusiasm, and mostly if he is a loving and gentle person. If he speaks with confidence, I would watch his body language and tone of voice while speaking. If he uses positive language, if he listens carefully and respects the students, and he's able to put himself in the position of the children. And what is 
at the end, I would ask him what is more important, the subject he will teach or the children in class. Yes, I, I think that it is very difficult, that it's very challenging to find a very good, good, good teacher. Yeah. So I remember when I was making um, hiring of directives at the organization when I, where I worked, uh, I used to ask the receptionist, how does this candidate behave? Because uh, one thing was what they answered to my questions during the interviews and another, the behavior they really had when I was not looking at them. So um, I, I, I think that uh, your questions would be very interesting to uh, also be tested like this, to see how okay. they behave. That's right. Experience That's helps in that. Exactly. Very good, dear, dear Vasiliki. Well, I have another question here. What does a teacher's satisfaction depend on? Or maybe is it possible to measure a teacher's satisfaction? Well, from my experience, a teacher's satisfaction depends mainly on the student's responses their facial expressions and body language while they are in class will indicate their interest and respect for their teacher. If they are joyful and happy to attend the lesson and participate in the extracurricular activities, then we give the message to their teacher that uh, they really are interested and also their good grades and participation in the class will show to the teacher that they are happy and satisfied. On the other hand, there is also a quantitative measure of the teacher's satisfaction in the results of the students who prepare an evaluation at the end of the semester and uh, they are asked to give a number, say from one to five, to evaluate the behavior and performance of their teacher, plus their expectations from him or her. Of course, this is not the best way, but it is also a measure of the satisfaction of the teacher. Those are very good uh, examples of how uh, can we know if the teacher is really satisfied? So that's great also. Thank you, dear Vasiliki. And here I have another question. Uh, can you please share with us an example of an inspiring teacher when uh, you were a student? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> An inspiring teacher that I always remember as a student in high mm -hmm. school was uh, uh, a teacher, a lady teacher, who was always available to listen to us privately or even at her home and give us advice on problems that we had, encourage us and so always an interest in our condition. I remember this teacher always, and I met her when she was an old lady, and again thanked her very much for her help in my life. Yes, I can imagine. We always keep in our hearts those kind of teachers, so I can understand you. Yeah. Well, dear Vasiliki, maybe we have another question here. Uh, Teachers today are often stressed and frustrated. Many children lack of discipline and their attention span is very small. There are many challenging issues to face at school. Bullying, for example, is one. How can a teacher face these multiple challenges? Well, first of all, he has to try to have peace inside. This is difficult, especially in these conditions. But if he really loves the children, he will be able to manage with this. And mostly 
of all, he has to be patient and encourage his children. Yes, I think that patience and calm are characteristics that are very important today for the teachers. Well, dear Vasiliki, I will ask our dear participants to write their questions if they have more in the chat. And if not, maybe we have another question here. Let me see. More than a question, I have a, a, something that I would like to share with you and with the whole team. And it is that in uh, the School of Thailand, Dr. Jun Sai uses to uh, ask the, the students about uh, what they uh, think about their teachers in order to choose the right ones in, at the school. What do you think about that practice? Yes, this is true. And I saw it also when I visited the school of Dr. Jun Sai in Thailand. And he told me that is what he is using. And it is very helpful because then the teacher, the, the students can sense a loving person. Mm -hmm. And therefore, their opinion is very, uh, is very precious for the director. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are very perceptive. They can uh, help us to choose the right ones. That's true. And here we have another question. And uh, can you share any challenges you had as a teacher and how did you face it? Yes. Well, the usual challenge that may happen is when two students in the class start talking or not paying attention or even making noise in the class. Mm -hmm. That case, I had to call the student after class, come to my office and we discussed the reasons he was behaving in that way in class and let him understand that he is making difficulties for the rest of the students and he should uh, really find a way to enjoy the course, the lessons. And uh, really, this was very helpful because the student then, because he saw the respect I was showing to him and the interest, he would change his behavior. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Vasiliki. Uh, I, I remember uh, a person that was studying, studying with me at school when I was a little kid and he was never paying attention. He was so difficult too. And I remember that the teacher decided to, um, to ask him to help her uh, with the duties to write on the blackboard and things like that. And he was so occupied that he stopped at that. So it was so interesting to, to have so many things to do in that case. It's great. Yes. That's a challenge, I think. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, maybe we can have another question by here. Let me see if I have another one that arrives here. Mm. Yes. In what ways has the value of love been central to your role as a teacher? Well, uh, first of all, we start from the general appearance, a smiling face toward the children, a good morning with hearty love. And uh, then I suppose it is the interest I have in all of them, in respecting them, not letting any question unanswered and sometimes uh, in inviting them to go together outside the course to have an extracurricular activity and that was shown very well during the activities of the club community contribution where we all uh, together were working with uh, 
old age people or children at the orphanage or planting trees and all this increased our love for each other yes i can imagine so the the, the key thing is to get closer and closer to them that's exactly. a very okay exactly. i can understand dear vasiliki thank you so much for your inspiring answers too now i uh, i would like to ask susan to take over again and uh, thank you thank you thank you <laughs> thank you both dear vasiliki and esther chris for this lovely questions and answers um session of course we'd like to remind you also that you can any questions that may come to you during the next couple of weeks please write them to us and we will be very happy and Vasiliki will be very happy to answer you also by email so this uh, option is always open for any question that you may have and that you would like to ask to clarify doubts or go a little bit deeper into the topic so now we are more or less, um, we have come to the moment that we can have a break. We will have a 10 minute break and then come back together for our interactive workshop. So we will see you in a short while. Thank you.